All right, the big countdown for this year's Fur Rondi is underway. The exciting event at downtown Anchorage kicking off later this week. The first event scheduled for Friday. We have the Fur Rondi Executive Director John McCleary here with us tonight to get us up to speed on this year's festivities. John, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Well, thank you for the invitation. So, John, Fur Rondi is such a favorite pastime for people here in Anchorage right in the middle of winter. How long has this event been going on? How did it get started? Well, this year is the 89th annual festival. And it started with uh, a hockey team going up to Fairbanks and getting crushed. And uh, Vern Campbell came back and was looked with his team and said, we should be able to have a festival, a sports festival, like Fairbanks did in 1935. And so they put their minds together and in 1936, created the Anchorage Winter Sports Festival, which was an, a resounding success with seven different sports. And then in 1938, the Chamber of Commerce and other city leaders said, well, you know, we have so many people coming in, selling their furs, and everybody is rendezvousing in Anchorage. The name then changed to the Fur Rendezvous, and it's been going on ever since. Wow. All right, so new events this year. Tell us about them. Oh, gosh. Well, we've got some unique events. We have a pickleball tournament on Saturday that's happening at the ARC uh, Recreation Center on, on Arctic. We have the si Rondi Silent Disco and the Polka Palooza happening as our finale party at the Egan Center on March 2nd. Uh, it should be just an incredible, crazy day of fun. And then we also have the Frosty Paw Dog Jog, mm -hmm. which is part of the Frostbite Foot Race. And we're hoping that, that, that the owners will come out, dress their dogs up in their best looking outfits so that they can win best of show, either first, second, or third. Again, part of Frostbite Foot Race on Saturday on uh, February 24th. All right, we saw some video there of the outhouse races. That's my personal favorite. And uh, we have some digital renderings of this year's color and uh, booster pins. Tell us about them and the significance of wearing the pins. Well, the, the most important part is it is a critical part of our uh, fundraising efforts. It is This is a community festival, and it's supported by the community. And that is done by buying a, a collector pin, which right now uh, we've had collector pins since 1940. And then, or buying a booster pin, which is an Anchorage School District art project and contest that started in 1974. Through all the events, people can participate by spectating, participating as far as an entry into those activities. Or again, with businesses, we the businesses have embraced us, this community festival, so we totally round out the whole concept of Fur Rendezvous. And so much fun. John, when they said you were coming in for this interview, I was a little terrified. I thought you might bring the Keystone Cops with you. I don't have my Fur Rondi pin on yet. <laughs> I didn't want to get busted like I did. I think well, I just happened to have one for you, Mike. Oh, uh, great. The, uh, I'm, I'm yes, the Keystone Cops. Cops, this is a major fundraiser mm -hmm. for them. They support the key clubs in the Anchorage School That's District, right. along with some other of their missions. So it is an important way to support a, a nonprofit that's supporting kids in schools. Very we good. touch over 40 different nonprofits through the festival, either we are helping them monetarily or we're giving them a platform for having their event in our community, such as the Pickleball Association or the Stone Soup Group doing the kick sled event on Saturday on the Park Strip. 